Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in today's part seven of the Employee Manager, we have scheduling. And that's going to include scheduling of any type of events. We even have holidays in there. We have the ability to move to previous and next month along with this month. We're using conditional formatting to cover our scheduling. And we also have a brand new admin interface where we have a four tab interface on admins. We have added custom employee fields as well so we can add in any type of employee as well as new employee defaults and a host of other types of features over here in the employee we now have custom fields so we've got tons and tons to show you and I'm really excited to get to it especially with this employee scheduling where we've created this schedule without any VBA as well and we just have a little bit of VBA using for previous and next so it's gonna be a great training it's gonna be a long one so get your tea get your coffee and and let's get started. All right, we're welcome back. Really great to have you here in today's part seven of the Employee Manager. This is going to be part seven. We're going to focus on the scheduling, but we've got a lot to show you here. So we're going to go over it briefly, a summary of what we're going to go through today, and then we're going to get right into it. Starting with the admin screen, there's been a lot of additions here. Uh, I've separated it into four different tabs now, and we'll go briefly over this tabs feature, but this is pretty much the same type of tabs feature that we did cover in part one. So if you want a deep and thorough of how we created this tabs feature, uh, the same as what we did in part one where we covered the employee manager tabs here. So we're not going to cover that too much because it's exactly the same. We use the same type of macro, same features. And so we've got a company work schedule here where we've added and we want to be able to add work days and non work days because that's going to translate into our schedule. For example, if we were going to say we only have Sundays off, right? So we have six uh, work days and then Sunday off, that's going to translate directly into our schedule and automatically here we have in gray. And if we had no work days off, we would just uh, take this and uh, change it to work day and then our, in our scheduling we're going to show that there's no off days now off days are in gray and of course you can customize it and change the color and I'll show you how to do that but right now we'll go ahead and set it for Saturday and Sunday's off day so we have a dynamic scheduler that's going to work we also have the ability to schedule holidays we have a whole list of holidays and and you can put any holiday you want here or any combination of holidays holidays are also going to transfer into the schedule for example in uh, January we have uh, let's say uh, October we have Columbus Day October 9th it's currently October here so if we go into our example we see Columbus Day is in purple we've currently set them as purple and we click on that we're gonna get a uh, automatic note a customized note that says what holiday is so it's really convenient all right we also have the ability to show events and all the details about events just by clicking on event where we have showed the event name uh, and uh, specific leave type, uh, the employee, the notes, uh, and everything associated with the event as far as a start on and start and end on. So that's really convenient. And uh, so let's say back into the admin. So we have holidays as well. We've put in event types and leave types. We have those there, but they're now organized. I've also set uh, work week starts on Monday, and we have company start time and company end time. These are going to be handy a little bit later on. We're not using this feature just yet, but I think in the uh, scheduling, it's going to be helpful when we add those. So we've got them just in case. The uh, overtime accrues, let me put a space between that. The overtime accrues at eight hours per day. You can set those, and we also have at a number of hours per week too. This is going to help us enable automatically when uh, our employees work over these limits it automatically sets those times to overtime so we're going to need that that's going to be really important and then also we have the ability this came up on a user suggestion uh, one of our followers said we want to be able to to, should total times be in either two, you know, show 2.5 or 2 minutes and 30. So this way our time formats can be either in decimal format or time format. And those are going to be used for when we total. Like for example, when we go into employee manager and we see our time clock history, here we have our, our overtime hours and our regular hours. We want to show the formats differently when we have data in there. So that way we can adjust the data. It's going to be a really nice feature. And a lot of programs, some people prefer to show uh, hours in, in two and a half hours in this format or perhaps in this format. So we have two different uh, formats. And then of course we have this folder. This is was here before. We just kind of moved it over. Employee settings, there's a lot new here. 
uh, we have employee settings. The idea is in this case that when you have new employees, if I have a new employees, I don't necessarily want to clear all the fields. Maybe 90% of my employees are hourly. So why not set defaults to hourly? Why not set specific defaults so that every new employee, maybe all of our new employees make $15 an hour. So why don't we set that up? And that so this allows us to set predefined defaults so when we create new employees a lot of the work is already done so these are defaults and so we have this for overtime hours we may increase these defaults as we build out our employee but this what this helps us do is create new employees rather quickly when we have a set of values that are default for new and these are really cool these are field labels and this is a really really cool feature I'm super excited to show you we have the ability um, to add customized fields and you're gonna like this because almost everybody wants to customize their application specifically to their companies or to their needs. For example, so what I've done is, you know, we didn't have too much really space here in general info and time clock history. Those are kind of dedicated, but in payroll details, we had some more space here. We only had we only had these fields previously. So I added custom fields here and I renamed it earnings and details. So we put in four custom fields. And you can customize not only the names, but you can customize the type of fields. So for example, this is just showing a number right now. Right? So if we were to go back into the admin screen and go back into the employee settings and we want to change that, let's say we want to change that uh, to, let's say, re maybe they have a contract or something, renew date, right? So we, and that would be a date filter. Right? So we might want a date filter on that. And then that would be a date, excuse me, a date type of field. So we might, and we might have, um, let's see, test score. We may want that as a, as a number field. We have, uh, let's say we have, we also have some text. Maybe we want to know uh, father's name. So we want that as a text field. And what about, a, what about a skill, like some kind of a skill? What about a skill level? Maybe we have carpenter skill. So maybe we want this as a list field, right? So what if we have it as a list? Now we have all of a sudden a list that becomes available. And in fact, if we were to change each of those two lists, you would notice that each of them has the capability of having their own defined list. So it's really, really exciting. Although we only have, we'll just put these back to the date. So you do have the ability to make them all list and they're all drop down lists. So it's really, really exciting. And so once you, let's go put, put this back to date, we'll put this back to number. So we really have, and as we do this, we're going to and then this back to a text field so and then we have like different items that we can put here so it's really awesome and so so if we have a drop down list here and then we go back into the employee fields in uh, right here and we see that all of a sudden this gets formatted automatically as a date this is a text and this would be a number this will be text as a number and then a carpentry skill we automatically have this as the drop down list so it's really cool so if we were to make this one a drop down list it's not right now but if we were to go ahead and say okay employee settings i want the third one to be a drop down list we just do list and we have our our different values here so automatically we go back into the employee manager and now it's a drop down list so it's really cool I'm, I'm excited to show you this too this covers so much in other words you have now you have now four fields with complete customized you can of course the labels you can see the labels are automatically customized of course the field types are automatically customized so it's really great and the formats are automatically customized and of course you can also set the um, default value for each of these this is not working yet in other words i didn't i didn't get a chance to when we have a new employee this is not set yet but it will be it's really simple just to make those so i didn't get a chance to do that we, we got a lot to cover already so so that's how that works custom employee fields are great and i wanted to show you that because it gives us a chance to show you how we can format fields through vba whether it's a date a number a list a list type of validation or an amount so we get to show you some really cool excel tricks and of course they're useful and uh, also conditional formatting which we use to hide or show these lists so I thought that was pretty pretty cool so I'm excited to show you that alright so we've got uh, employee status we had those before those are just gonna be and uh, payroll details now we've got we had these payrolls which we showed you last time but I just put them in a separate tab we have some defaults for federal and local we want to set these so that when we have new employees we can set those defaults pay additions and pay deductions we can set those lists here so when we when we have them for each employee though they're going to be set so those are just basic lists pay additions pay deductions 
And so when we have a, a pay deduction or pay addition, they'll be available here into, let's go back into the employee, and they'll be available in pay deductions here in a drop down list or pay additions here. So they'll be available for you. It's just a little bit easier. So we're going to build that out a little bit later on, but we're going to focus mostly on scheduling here. And so that's, let's go back into the admin here, I'll bring it all the way up here. Okay, so we have. Uh, also users and settings this is going to be great because we're going to be able to add usernames emails and passwords as you know in the future I want to make this multi-user so not only shareable but so different people can have access to different and then we're going to give each sheet different security now we went over this in one of our first videos and this is going to be I, we only have really four sections so this will give we'll give them three different uh, full control viewable control or no no viewable so we'll, we'll have like a drop down list that's kind of what I have planned for this, so we've got to cover that. We may build out this even more. There's, we have space, and uh, so we'll go over that. All right, so we've covered that, and uh, as far as you know, the general, we'll go into the detail in, right now. And uh, we've events, we've added some more. On, so I, in the employees, I added just these four fields. That's about all I did for the employees, and I'll go over that as well in the employee list in the events we made a few additions let's go ahead and go over those let's bring this a little bit down so you can see all of it i've added for leave types i've added a leave type here because what we need to know if there's a leave we need to know what type of leave that is and the reason we need to know is because we need to automatically accrue the time like for example if this person was gone a full day on leave that's eight hours or nine hours we need to accrue that once we have the employee manager when we go back into our leave leave section we want to make sure that all of our total accrued are based on the leave type right so if they've got different sick and I'll build this out too so if there's sick leave right we want to show the total accrued and how many they've used how many they have and then of course all the totals here so that's why when we have an event a specific leave event and we want to show what specific type of leave and of course remember you can add to this leave list here this is I just put four items here but in admin, we get to put in whatever we want here. So it's very cool. So we can put in whatever type of leave we want and then automatically, is based on our events, our leave type is gonna be accrued based on the uh, leave type that you set here. So that's really important. And this is only visible for leave types using conditional formatting. We have training, it's gone, or training another one's gone. All right, so moving along, what I've also added is I've added some drop down lists here under reoccurring. So we have the ability to set the reoccurring all on drop down lists for days and weeks, and as well as here reminders. So those are just data validations here. Also, based on just a pretty, you know, just a simple kind of like frequency list. It's just based on that. Nothing, nothing too specific or, or difficult about that. But I just wanted to give the users some type of parameters to. Uh, and of course, you can increase, you can change this list. But I've tried to cover, you know, everything that could be used. And so automatically now, let's go into this. Automatically, when we save those, when we go back into the events, let's take a look at this. I've set a reminder for, so when we make a change, it automatically reminds us. Now we have a reminder for here. So we, this reminder is based on this. So for example, if we have our starting on, on 1023, and we want to remind, let's just put, pick something easy. One day before, one day before right so that means our reminder is going to go out on October 22nd at 8 a.m. that's when our reminder is going to appear whether it's a pop-up or an email or perhaps both so that's so we need to know that time we need to because we're going to need to run filters based on that so as soon as we make a change to an existing transaction we go back into the events list you're going to see automatically 1022 at 8 a.m. now if we were to change that back in the events if we were to change that to let's say one week right so if we go one week it's gonna automatically let's see well, I don't have one week it's seven days fair enough seven days okay seven days before uh, it's gonna change to this October 16th at 8 a.m. so when we look in the events list right away October 16th it's automatically changed the reason is if very soon we're gonna run a filter right and we need to know when we run that advanced filter we need to know which 
reminder should we do today or right now? So we're going to set an on event and events right then to run those reminders, whether it's an email or pop up at that specific time. So that specific time is very, very important. Uh, so we need to know that and we need to make sure that uh, reminders is set to yes. Of course, if it's set to no here, nothing, even if there's a date here, nothing's going to happen. So those are really important. We needed those for reminders. We need that. That's very important when our reminders are selected. Of course, if we just unselect that and go back into the events list, it's been changed to no here. So we did go over that as well uh, earlier as far as how do we update those using data mapping. We covered that a lot, but I wanted to show you those updates. And we'll go ahead and show you how we did that into the Developers tab, Visual Basic. And we're going to go into the events because that's where we're making our change. And basically what we want to do is we want I want to know when when a few things happen, when a user makes a change to F13 or G13 or perhaps even J10, if they make a change to either of those, we need to set that, correct? So let's take a look back into the VBA under the worksheet because we're focused on the worksheet. And let's take a look down here, all the way down, let's take a look on changes of F13 and G13 right here, F13 and G13. Take a look at that F13, G13. So if there's a change to either one of those, and we need to make sure in string, what is that? That means it's checked, right? We're not gonna, they're, we're not gonna bother with changes if it's not checked. In other words, if this is not checked, it's not important because the reminders. But once it's set, then yes, it's important to change that. So we want to make sure that reminders have been set. Then what? Then sheet seven. That's our that's our list. Right? That's our, remember, that is our events list. That's what we're focused on, events list. Sheet 7, we know the column AA, right? Because that was the column I just went over. Events list, we know the column. We're just going to focus on that column, right? And we know the row. What's the row? It's 18. How do we know the row? Well, if you're in review, we know that the row is right here in B3. So we know the row, we know the column, and we know it's a simple update. So let's take a look at how we did that in the math. And what we did is, B3 value, so B3 is the row, A, A, and B3, so we know the location, where to put that. And it, we're gonna, what we're going to say is it's going to say J10 plus L10 minus B11. What is B11? We're going to take a look at that right away. J10 is the date. L10 is the time. J10 and L10 are the date and the time. Let's look at that. Right. So we're going to add those together. J10 and L10. Right, so it's going to be October minus what? Well, minus what we did is we used a, a formula for that, and we did that in B11. So let's take a look at that. B11, right, minus, minus B11 right here. Minus, what is B11? Well, in this case, it's seven days, but it's a formula because it's not always seven days. So we're going to basically say in this formula, if G13, right, is hours before, hours, then we're going to multiply F13 by 0 .001. This is basically one hour of one day. Remember, a day is one. A day is one. An hour is one divided by 24, and a minute is one divided by 24 divided by 60. Which so if it, if this is one hour, so this is one hour. So we're going to multiply these two, and that's how we get hours before. But what if it's minutes? Minutes again is point zero. We, you know, you can do this on the math. Let's just take a look. So you see this. We've got it here. So let's get out of that. We know a day is one, right? One equals equals one divided by twenty-four. That is one hour. What about if it's one minute? So we'll just put some parentheses around that. So let's. How do we calculate one minute divided by sixty? And that is our one minute. So we know we know the decimals. We know what to add, right? So that's all we have to do is do that multiplication. So if it's minutes before, otherwise, otherwise F13. F13 is just days. In other words, if it's not hours and it's not minutes, then it must be days because we only have three options. So if it's just days, then we're just a simple subtraction of the day. So it's, this is very easily, look, it's just one little formula. And we can choose between minutes. If it's minutes, if it's seven minutes before, it's going to be Point zero. So look, let's look at this. If it's our 1023 at 8 a.m., then it should be 1023, 753 a.m. We just subtract this and we go back into our lists, our events list. You'll see 
10:23, 7:53 a.m. So it's actually quite simple as long as we have this amount. This does all of our calculation in B11, whether it's minutes, hours, or days. And so if we were to change this right back to days, you'll see it just changes to seven. So we use this little formula here to really help us. So it's really convenient, and I wanted to show that to you how we actually calculated the reminder time. And that's going to be important once we get these reminders up and functioning, whether it's for the pop-up or email. All right, good. I'm glad I got to show that to you. Let's move on. So that's pretty much for events and the changes that we have made there. We're going to focus primarily on the scheduling, and to do that, we've got to understand a few different things of what we have added in here. The first of which is the events list. There have been some changes and some named ranges that have been done for this in order to, to use that. So let's go ahead and get into those. Now, the events, we've built that out a little bit, and I've added a few different fields. We've added leave type here, which we've discussed. I've added reminder quantity, reminder frequency, so we need those. So as you can see in the last one, we were just working with sick reminder of seven days before. So those are all stored separately so that they can be recalled. And then of course, the reminder for those, those date and times calculated based on what we just went over. So that's the only one that we have been added, ha added to the events list. But some named ranges have also been added. So let's go into the formulas in the name manager and take a look at some of the named ranges that have been added and we'll go over that so it's very important so we have event we have employee ID I don't know if we had this before I can't remember but basically the employee ID is what we're going to focus on is just the employee ID and that is an offset and remember we're going to use four this is very important four is the header why are we using four because if you were to delete every single row in this table and it started at five you would have a ref error we cannot have that it's so start your when you have dynamic name ranges start them on the header row but this one right here this one right here moves it down a row that means it's starting at a row so if we were to erase this right and we were to tab over that and tab back into it, you'd see it starts at row four. We don't want that, right? We don't want, if you look at the dancing ants, so we want it to start one row down. That's why that one is very important right there, that one. So we need that one. Now we also need to count. We also want to count starting at four, but we don't want to count all of them. We want to count one less, right? So we, because if this starts at five, we're also going to have a ref error. If we delete every single line in the table, it's going to also, we don't want to start this on five. We want to start it on four, but yet we want to subtract one. I right? want to subtract one. If we were to remove that, subtract one, and we we're going to tab out and tab back in. You'll see it's got one row down. We don't want that, right? It's going to count one row down. We don't want that. So we do need that minus one right in there at the end, minus one before the comma one. So when we tab into that, it works perfectly starting at the first and last. Now we carry this same for every one of our named ranges in this events list, except the count. Why are we counting A? Why are we not? Our list is on E, but why are we counting A? Because A is required. A, if you'll see, a is our event ID. Event ID are required for every event. So we want to use a column that's always going to have a value. When we're counting, we always want to use a column. Of course, events ID, there will be no event created that does not contain an event ID. So that's the column we want to use. That's our anchor column, our counting anchor column. We're going to, of course, use column E. That's the one that we're going to focus our data on. But as far as we're counting, we're going to use some column that contains always data in this case or for every named range in this table we're always going to use column a and then we're going to set the column so really when you want to create a name range you just copy this and then you go ahead and change this just the column so when we look at other so when we look at other let's see it's going to ask us to change so when we look at others like event uh event end on and event start on again we've used a here except we're going to start on m and m of course is the column that includes that end on date right here let's tab over to that all right so you see there now we have m let's go ahead and move this over so you can see that and here it is m here that's the end on date so we're using the same principles but different so we need to name these ranges and they're always dynamic so that means we're using offset so as this list grows so does our named range so we have event 
end on, we also have event start on, event start on. So if we scroll down, we're going to see we have another one, event start on. Tabbing it over, we'll see event start on here. So we've got that covered. I've got employee ID. Let's see what else we've got. A few others. We've got event ID, which we had. And of course, this one includes A because that is all that is when we're discussing here. So we've got those that we've created. Um, let's go ahead and refers to. We're going to sort by refers to so we can look at all of the ones that were focused just on the events, the events list. So we really have one, two, three, and four. So we have event ID, event type. That's going to help us. We're going to need that, the same idea, event type here. And we have employee, event employee ID, covered that already. And we have start on and end on. So we just have those, I guess, six or five or six different named ranges based on the employee, excuse me, based on the event list. So those are really important, especially when we're focused on scheduling because we want to we want to do that. We'll need those. So let's go over a few other named ranges. In the admin screen, I've got holidays here. And we've got two named ranges, one for holidays and one for holidays date. And that's going to be important because we need to know what holidays are on our schedule so we can locate them on our schedule. Let's take a look at that in the formulas name manager. And of course, we can now that we're sorting by refers to, we can easily see all the name ranges in the admin screen. So if we look at holiday dates and we tap over to that, we'll see that I'm, I didn't use an offset in this one because there's no drop down list. So I just covered the entire column and just made it a fixed column. If this was a drop down list, I would use offset. In other words, I don't want to see blank rows, but there is no drop down list for holiday dates. So it's fine to include all of the available common all of the available rows in the single column. And we did the same exact thing for holiday names here. Tabbed over here, all I did was create a named range based on the entire list here. That's going to come in handy when we're focused on our scheduling. So that's important. Also, there's a few others. I did weekdays. What is this? Let's take a look at that. Weekdays, well, that's going to come in handy soon when we have a weekday. And we also have workday numbers. Let's look at that. That's interesting. Okay, workday numbers is one, two, three, four, five, you know, and all the work dates based on the date. Let's go ahead and close that and see why we did this. This is based on this list. So if it's a basic simple formula, all we're doing is saying if this equals workday, mark it uh, the row minus 24. The row, what is the row? This row is 25. So if we minus 24, this is just a quick way to create one, two, three. So this row is 26. So if my minus 24, if this equals workday, then this is two. I, basically, what I need to know is I need the numbers for each day. One is Monday, two is Tuesday. So if I make, if I turn this to off day, that two is going to be disappeared. There is no two there. This is important because I need to know the day numbers that are work days because that is going to help us when we go for scheduling because I'm going to pull this date. I need to know, is this a Tuesday or a Monday? And if so, is it a work day? If not, then make it gray because that's how we make it gray. We use conditional formatting. So it's very, and I'll show you that a little bit later. It's very important to know these dates and we've named that range. It's a named range. So it's called work day numbers, work day numbers. So that means if Tuesday is not a work day, if Tuesday is an off day, there is no two. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a test. And I'm going to say if the work day of this date is it. So for example, let's go ahead and let's just click here. Equals weekday, right? And then we click on this day. What is the weekday? And then we comment, and I believe that is a, we're starting, we're starting on Monday, right? Monday is our first, so we're going to use that. So we're going to use that two, right? So what is, what is that? That's two. So you see this day is two, right? Now what I want to do is I'm going to run a test in a formula and say, hey, if two, if we run a match, if this is two, if we match this, is it going to be true or false? For example, now we've got the two. Well, let's go ahead and run a match equals, right? We're going to run a match. What is the match? We're looking up two. We're going to look up. We want this value is two, right? We're looking that up. And what, what are we looking at? What range are we looking it up? We're looking it up into work day numbers. That's the number, work day numbers. And we want an exact match. So what is that going to, what's that going to, oh, let's fix that. What is that? That's an NA, right? Why is it NA? Because it's an error because there it's not found. What if we take go admin, right? What if it is found? What if we change this to work day? Now it's found, right? Now there's a two. Now we'll go back into the scheduling. 
now now it's found see now it's no longer so now we can use that to test we can basically say if it's an error if there's an error that means it's not a work day right so we can use that to test that mass test and we did just that in our scheduling so we'll go over that in just a moment but basically it's it's this right here we're using that match if there's an air is true then w w for weekend right so i'm using that and i'll go over it a little bit more detail but i wanted to cover everything in the admin screen first so that's our that's why we named that range now you know why so what other named range i think we covered uh, all the important ones for the scheduling let's go ahead and just go ahead and in the admin screen and double check to make sure we've got holidays we've covered we've covered our work day numbers that's important weekdays is, is important d8 through d14 that's just a list of the days that'll come in handy a little bit later on and uh, that's pretty much it for as far as the scheduling so we've covered that let's go so now we have the foundation of the scheduler we have our list our list make up our foundation we have work days we have holiday dates right we need to test if that's a holiday date now we can start to build our formula for the scheduling okay also we have in our scheduling we have here it is it's a very very simple and it's built on formulas yes we have some macros to move through months we have some macros to display a more information on a pop-up and this is all this is, is a pop-up comment but it's been formatted you know when you add a comment insert comment right it's this comment except that it's been formatted through VBA so it looks a lot better than this comment it's just a comment but it's been properly formatted so it looks a little bit nicer and so when you hover over it and the reason is I decided to clear them out I don't want too many comments it's gonna slow it down so I decided and you could change this you could change it I decided to clear out the comments as we click and I'll show you in the code so as you click one it clears all the others just so you can show and the reason is is after we build out our what I want to do is when we build out our scheduling our clock in clock out I want to know I want to look at the schedule I want to know who's clocked in I want to know who's clocked out I want to know if somebody's overtime right so we can use this scheduler for clock in so for example if we're here on the 12th we can see everybody that's clocked in and out previously we can see those people that are clocked in but not clocked out we can see lots of different things in the future so it's going to be really really powerful so let's break down this schedule and see how it's been created again as with most uh, sheets I've used a and B for our admin in which they'll be hidden I've created an employees list and this list is linked to BC4 a BC column over in the employee list because when we want that when it's sorted or when it's great I always want that link and let's go into the employee list and if you look over in BC here is our employee list and this automatically is linked to the actual employees here in their first name and last name so that's our main employee list so what I want to do is I wanted to create a link so that any changes here are automatically changed in our scheduling so that's why this is a link and of course what I really want to do is I don't want to focus on names always I want to focus on IDs because names can change IDs will never change so when we run our scheduling that's why in our that's why in our events list we always have employee ID it's the employee ID that we're going to use to link it is the employee ID although we do have employee names but that's just for view for viewable purposes we really are going to use our employee IDs and that's why we always have them and that's why users cannot change them they're always unique and they're controlled by the application so that there's never an issue so when we create events they're based on employee IDs when we do our scheduling although we can see the employee names here when we run our formulas it's always based on the employee ID and to get that employee ID we just used an index match formula based on the employee name here into the employee so we've indexed and we're going to index the employee ID because that's what we want the value we want we're going to run a match based on d3 which is the employee name and then we're going to run that so that's just going to give us our accurate accurate employee ID and that's what we need and we've run that all the way down to the bottom so we've got that covered all the way to row 309 you can expand on this some of you have mentioned you've got you know 2,000 3,000 employees you can just extend this beyond that so make sure you do and you update all of your ranges accordingly if you have more employees 
So again, in fact, um, keep this in mind. I did originally in some designs, I had this at a year, but it was too slow. It just, it would, it, it slowed down the application. So that's why we're gonna limit it to just a month. But I had it at a full year where you would scroll it, but it just, it was kind of slow. It didn't work as, as nice as I wanted to. So keeping it small and also the, the application went from like uh, 500 kilobytes to about five megabytes. So it, it really blew up in size. So keep that in mind. In order to reduce size, we're just showing a single month. Even though some of you want to show multiple months, you can do that. But keep in mind, it could slow down and increase the uh, memory on the application. So keeping it small is good for that. So now we know how we arrive at our employee IDs. We know how we arrive at our employee names. They're simply linked to the employee list sheet. And we've got a year here and we've got a month. Now our month is located here in B10. So when we use click previous one month, it's gonna reduce that. And of course, if it gets to one, it's gonna to go to 12 and then knock down a year down here in the year. And then again, if we're at 12 and we increase the month, it's gonna increase the year and then bring the month down to one. So that we do that with just some very simple macros. We'll go over that in just a moment as well. So that's very, very simple. We have here a, our today, just the current date that's going to help us. And we always want a week start on. I want to know when the week starts because what I want to do is I want to highlight the current week in green so it's easily. And I've also done that through columns. I didn't necessarily want to highlight any colors for the day, for the current week because the colors, the colors as far as the filled cells, we're going to focus those on events or or uh, specific types of events or specific types of leave, the colors or holidays or weekends. So, but I did color the borders based on that. And so what we're gonna do is we need to find the first day of the work week. In fact, here, uh, the first day, today is Monday, the day of the recording. So our first day of the work week is on 1022. And in fact, if we're gonna go back into the admin here and take a look at that, we were to change that first day. Let's say we made it, we wanted it on Tuesday. Right? That's going to automatically change in the schedule, which is really nice. So now, Monday, it becomes the last day of our work week. You see, automatically, and we did that. So now we have the green. So now Tuesday, right, Monday, today, the, the October 22nd, is now the last day of the work week. So automatically it shows. So we use conditional formatting to automatically show the current week. It's nice to have a to know exactly what the current week is and the current day is in orange. And we did that through some conditional formatting. And also, we need to know the week start date. So let's expand that. This is going to help us, the week start column. This is through a, and this is through a formula. So that's very important. We'll show that to you. And basically, it's based on the current day, A2. We're going to match A2, and we're going to subtract whatever weekday. Remember, we focus on weekday. That gets the number. And we're matching the weekday. We're going to use a match, the admin, J7. What is that match? That is our start date, J7. That is our start date, J7 right here. We're going to match that. What are we matching it? We're going to match it in this. Remember this? That was just our weekdays range. So, for example, if Tuesday would be number two, right? If we're matching it and we got this range, Tuesday is two. So we know that Tuesday is two, Monday's one, et cetera, et cetera. So, moving along, so back into this formula. So, when we match, when we take A2 and we match the current day, we need to know the current day. What is it? We need to know admin so the, the day right the first day of our work week which we decided in di in the days this is going to get us to right here two two so when we use weekday a2 plus 10 that is going to give us our start week day so this will give us and then we just use index and what are we indexing f2 through a2 because i want to find what day in this range what I want to find the column, right? I need to know what column here, 21. So when we run that, it's going to say, okay, what is the first day of the work week? What is the first day? And what column is done? So that's going to help us for conditional. And then we also have the, the week start column here on the date. So basically, this simple formula tells us what day. For example, 16th was the first day of our work week when when our work week starts on Tuesday. 
right because today's Monday right so if we were to change this to Monday then this then today and today of course is the 22nd so now Monday becomes our first day so we can go back and here now Monday now now you see Monday's highlighted and the week star columns also on Monday so we have that so this a2 the current date minus the weekday a2 also the current day matching matching Monday and this basically this formula plus 10 plus 1 gives us our start weekday based on based on J7 based on our start weekday okay it's a little bit confusing but when you walk through that you'll just see real quick all we do is we locate what day we locate the current date and we subtract the weekday and then we plus 10 and that's how we get our current weekday all right so we've got that and we use that in the formula let's go ahead and go over conditional formatting highlighting these we go into home and then conditional formatting and manage rules we see just two rules one is for the current date and that's simple basically what I want to do is I want to say if it's today then highlighted orange and then we're going to cover this range it's F2 through AJ those are all of our dates so that's all of the dates next up is a formula and that basically what I want to do is I want to say for everything in this week everything in this week I want to color green let's go ahead and edit that we'll take a look at that so there's two conditions A4 remember A4 is the column right A4 is the first column right a4 is less than or equal to the actual column and that's one condition a4 is greater than the or equal to the column minus six this is going to give us our full range for coloring green full range of coloring green so that is why with this formula these two conditions that allows us to color all of the cells for the current week in green based on the column now why is this orange because orange is above if we were to move green above and we click apply you'll see our current date is gone in orange we don't want that we do want to I mean you could if you don't want the current day you could show it but I kinda like to show what current day it is so make sure that that rule is on top and moving it on top because it'll take precedence over the green color so you want to make sure the order is important too so when we apply that you'll see the orange also take precedence nothing so that's important so that is how we covered oh there's one more thing now let's go ahead and take a look in here and then go home and conditional formatting I want to show you the green borders here that's this one right here when we edit that world we're going to see the same very near the same formula in this case a6 is less than or equal to f2 f to being the current all the dates now notice that F F here does not have a dollar sign before it that's very important because we want to cover all of the columns in the specified row all of the columns through our range same here F2 so that's very very important and that is why the entire cell is not absolute only the row is absolute only the row is absolute not the column because we want to cover this all the columns within our range so of course a6 is absolute because that won't change that is based on the date so we're going to basically say if, if it's less than or equal to f2 if a6 is less than or equal to f2 and a6 is greater than or equal to f2 minus 6 this covers our entire week range and then what I want to do is I want to format those columns I want to give it a border a green border so that's how, how we do that we just give it that special green border so that any specific columns that have those dates are going to be colored green that differentiates the current week from all the other weeks within the month so that's how we do that let's continue on now so we've covered how to get the employee IDs and the employees we've covered how to conditional format we've covered how to conditional format these specific rows in the current week let's move on to getting our data in this particular calendar so we start off with a specific formula now it's a long formula but we're gonna break it down for you so that it's easy first of the thing I want to do is I want to figure out if it's a weekend or not okay for example this is a weekend October 6th is a weekend and I want to determine if it's a weekend I want to put a W a W there so how do we determine if it's a weekend if you remember we had admin we know that if if it's an off day those numbers are not going to be located six and seven are not going to be located in our 
workday numbers table, right? Six and seven, if we try to match a six or a seven, it's going to come back with an error. We can use that error to test in the schedule. So here we're gonna do that. Is error, we're testing for an error, all right? We're testing for an error. If it's true, if there's an error, if this formula, and I'll go over this formula in a moment, if there's an error, it's true, then put a W here. The reason there's an error is because that day is not found. What day is that? Okay, L2, we're focused on a specific a specific L, no, notice there's no absolute reference, just, just the row two. That way we can bring this formula all the way over here without worrying about messing it up. The weekdays, the weekdays, this is the, the return type, return type. If, so this right here, weekdays of L2 is gonna tell us what day it is. Okay, so weekdays of L2, that is going to leave us our specific date. In this case, it's seven, right, seven. L2 is October 7th is a Sunday, is a Sunday. So in this case, it's going to say, okay, weekdays of L2, this is a 7. Now, is 7 found in our named range? Is 7 found? No, it's not. It's not in that named range, right? 6 and 7 are missing. So if this is going to provide a, this right here, this match is going to create an error because it's not, because 6 is not found and 7 is not found. The weekday of L2 equals 7. So it's not found, it's going to create an error. If the error is true, then put a W here. Okay, great, now we have a W, but how do we get it gray? That is in conditional formatting. And where's the W? It's there, but where is it? I don't see a W there if it's a weekend. Well, let me show you. Conditional formatting, manage rules. Let's look for the rule right here. If the cell value equals a W, then format. Well, how do we get rid of the W? Well, all we did was change the font color back to the same color. If we were to change it back and click OK, and then click OK, and then apply, you're going to see all those W's show up. The reason they're hidden is because I've made the font color and the background color exactly the same. So if you notice here, under the format, and we fill, we can use the more colors. Well, that's the second gray down. And all we need to do is color the font color the same second gray down so that all of our W's disappeared. We use that same principle for every conditional format in this table, so we have a nice clean table without a bunch of words. Of course, you could leave the W there if you wanted to, but I'd like a clean table. So all we need to do is change the W, the same color, the background, and the font color the same color so that it disappears. And of course, this table will be protected once we run our protection. We will protect all this so that users cannot mess up these foremost and we've taken the same principle let's let's go back down now I want to know if it's a holiday we're gonna use the same thing the same exact match we know we've got holiday dates remember we went over this named range this is all the dates of our holidays now L2 again is a hall if it's a holiday it says if there's a match if the L2 if it's a the L2 is a date if there's a match here if it's false, right, in this case, if it's false, right, because if there's a match, then there's not going to be any error, right? So, for example, this is a holiday here, right? October 9th is a holiday. If we go into the admin, we'll see here, October 9th is a holiday, right? So, in our holiday dates list, let's look it over. On our holiday dates list, October 9th exists. So, when we match, when we run a match, that's going to be, it's not going to be an error, right? It's going to be found and there'll be no error. If there is no error, then mark it with an H. That's basically what I'm saying. If there is, and here it is always, if is error equals false, false, false in this case. That means it's found. We found a holiday date, mark it with an H. An H is going to denote our holidays. So taking N2, in this case, of course, it runs through all of the columns, all the way from F2 all the way to can't see it now, uh, AC or F2, I think. So if it comes all the way through, if it's found, if it's found, then error is going to be false. And if the error is false, then mark it. Otherwise, otherwise, don't do anything, right? Otherwise, continue on. So that is how we mark holidays. In this case, again, let's just go over that. In this case, it's marked with an H. So when we go ahead and go into back into our conditional formatting and manage rules, and we have purple here, and we edit that rule, and we see specific text. Actually, we could say, we could we could do it uh, to cell value, and then equals H. We want it really between equal to H. It's the same thing because we don't want it containing. Okay, so the cell value is equal to H. And again, all we've done in the formatting is the color 
the color of our font is that second purple down. The color of our fill is also the second purple down. You can change this close to whatever you like. Feel free. But you probably want the font and the fill color to be the same. So those are the only two formats that we've done for these. Theoretically, you could change the border if you wanted to stand out a little bit. You know, you can change the border. Let's say we change the border to a darker purple. Maybe you want it to stand out. And if we were to click apply and then apply, you see all of our borders would fill up purple of that. But in this case, we'll, we'll keep the borders off it. So if you want to remove the borders, you just clear it like that and it'll go back to the way it was. Okay, so that's how we customize that. And let's continue. So now we've covered weekends, we've covered holidays. So now our long formula is getting a little bit shorter now. Now it's going to get a little bit complicated, but it's also really fantastic because we're going to use a formula called sum product. And basically what I want to do is I want to say this. I want to look for events. And I want if there's an event, there's three conditions. Let's look at this. Let's look at um, let's look at yeah this event right here. Asian florist on 1022 to 1024. So let's go into our events list here, and we're going to look at Asian florist here. This event right here. See this one here? Okay. So we have Asian florist. The employee ID is 101001. We have a start date on October 22nd, and we have an end date on October 24th, and it's training. Okay. So if we have those conditions, what I want to do is I want to say, I want to look through this entire list. I want to say anytime if we have this specific, this specific employee ID and we have a start date that is equal to or greater than the start on and we have an end date that is less than or equal to, then I want it to show up on the schedule. So we can use some product to do that. And let's go ahead and go into that so we can see and I'll we'll extract that for you so you can see exactly how that was done. In fact, let's just clear this out. I'm going to clear all this out. I just for this particular, not this one actually, this one here. Let's do this one. I'm going to clear this out so we can just focus on just this part of the formula so we don't have to worry about any other formulas right now okay so we have if error and we can get rid of these two I believe that's it okay so now all I have I just want to focus on this part of the formula because it's not a holiday it's not a weekend so let's focus on this okay so we've got this formula here now we, it's some product so basically let's go through the formula and see how that works let's go ahead and take a look at this okay so here's the conditions we're going to index the event type. Event types are a list in our event list. Remember, we went over that. Those are all the event types. You want to just, let's look it up again. Let's like just so you're familiar with it. Go back into event type, just so we know what we're indexing. Tab it over, and we'll go to this sheet. So we're going to index all of these. That means that's the result. I want this, the results to be one of these. If the conditions are met, I want to list I'll, I'll want to list whatever's here if the conditions are met. Okay, so let's go ahead and escape out of that. We don't want to change any, make any changes to that. Make sure it's there. Okay, so that's what we want to do. So we want to index the events. That's the result. And so we know the result. And so we're going to index that. But we need to find the row. I need to find. I need to know what row certain conditions are met. What are those conditions? One condition. The employee ID must be 10001. The second condition, the event start on must be less than or equal to this. Start date must be less than or equal to this. The end date must be greater than or equal to this. So the end, so that that condition, those conditions must all work. And the row, so let, those are the conditions. Let's take a look. Some product here. The event employee ID must be B3, right? That's one condition. B3, of course, is here, 1001. Multiply that. The second condition, the event start on date must be less than or equal to AA2. Here it is, October 22nd. Okay. The another condition, the event on date must be greater than equal to AA2. So that's another one. So we have those three conditions. These are three conditions. If those are all met, if those conditions are all met, then do something. Then what? Multiply that times the row. We need to know the row and then minus four. And I'll show you why that minus four is very important. Let's go back into the specific field and let's take a look at that. 
under formulas and see how that works evaluate formula let's let's uh, evaluate this and okay so now what's going to happen is going to go through all the event lists c5 through c18 some products so we know this this is our event list this is the index evaluate okay now it's going now what it's going to do is going to look here's the event ids right here's all the event ids so we're looking for 101 okay this is true continue continue it's true here so it's looking for anything that's 1001 it's going to put true there so we keep going okay so now we know so now it's going to say false false true because that was 101 so now we know that actually it's going to be the second plus so every time it's 1001 it's going to put true so let's continue on with this so now it's going to multiply now we're into the dates these are the dates so it's looking for it's looking for dates that are specific to October 22nd in this case so it's gonna it's gonna say true or false true or false based on our based on our less than or equal to here it is based on our event start on less than or equal to so let's continue on so now it's gonna say some are false this one's true in this one looking to the second to the last one this one's true also so now we've got multiple truths continue on now we're going to multiply it by end on. Now we're on end on, okay? And we're going to evaluate. That's also true on the second. So basically, it's these. There's many men that are true, but it's they all have to be on the same row. That's the idea. They all have to be on the same row. So in other words, if everything's row in row three is true, then it's going to evaluate. So let's continue on now because it's going to multiply them. So now zero 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 one one. So the second. So we have some that are true. We have the third one that's true, and we have the second to the last one. This is the second to the last one uh, right here. That's also true. So there's two instances, two instances. Let's look at this. One, two, three. That's true, right? The third row is true. And the second to the last one, true. Okay, so we have two instances. Now we're going to focus on event end on. Continue on. Are there instances where that is true? Let's continue on. And you see, look, the second and the last one. Now we have also the, the last one. But look at this. Look at this. Remember, we had, but it's no longer true for the first one, but still it's true for the second to the last one. The second to the last one is one. So that's two instances where the second to the last one is true. And that's the one we're focused on. And let's continue to evaluate. Now we know the second to the last one meets our criteria. So now we say, okay, now we need to get the row. The rows start, look at this, the rows start at five, six, seven, eight. What is the row? What is the row to the second to the last one? Well, the second to the last one is 17, right? So the last one's 18. The second to the last one is 17. Okay, we know the row is 17, right? And then minus four, and I'll show you again why we're minusing four. Evaluate. Now, okay, so 17 is true. This one is the only, the second to the last row is the only row where all of our conditions are met. Remember, those are the employee ID is 1001, the event start on is less than or equal to AA2, and the event end on is greater than A2. Only the second to the last row met all three of those conditions. Now we know the row number. Now we know the row number. It's 17. But that but that's the row number based on our named range. So we'll focus on that. That's why we subtract four. So let's go back and evaluate that. Now 17 minus 4 is 13. Evaluate. And now we have, and now we have 13 because we just subtracted 4. So now what we're going to do is we're going to index the events list. Remember, these C5 through C18 is our event type, right? So now we say, okay, we're indexing our event type. We just need to know the 13th row, and then 1 is the is the column, which is that that column. And that will return training. So let's go ahead and look at the events list and see how that happened. Okay, look, it returned 17, right? It returned it returned 17 because it's on row 17. But I don't want row 17. I want if we're indexing, right? If we're indexing this, I need to know what the 13th number is. It's row 17, right? But it is our rows, our indexes start here. Our indexes start on in row five. That's why we subtract four. They start on row five. That's why we must minus four. So remember, the second to the last item, the second to the last item, 1001, that's true. October 22nd, that's true. End on 24th. So all of these conditions are met. One, two, 
three conditions are met and this is the only row in which all three of those conditions are true yes remember we saw 101 yes the employee ID was true but look here the start on was 11 and the start on didn't wasn't correct right so these that's why this one didn't return we only had one item that was true so when we use some product all three of these conditions true 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 okay it told us the row and then we know the row then it says what is the row the row is 17 yep we know the row 17 told us the row but we we're going to index this right so if we index this look if we go one two three we need to know you see this this is 13 right 13 row let's do that again you see 13 right there so we if we're indexing it and we need to get the 13th value of that index that's going to be training so that's why training now training is right here but we can't see it because it's hidden so when we do home conditional formatting manage rules let's take a look at the green edit that rule format the rule go to the font and change that color to black we're gonna see click on that and click on that now you see the word training there right it's not right now you see the word training there we don't need the word training we just need to know that it's training so now we can turn it well, undo that okay so let's go back into the conditional formatting and let's look at that so we're gonna say if the cell value equals training then assign a conditional formatting and what we're gonna do is we've used the second green color here and so we can change the font also back to that second green color to hide the text now we have everything in training is going to be green so we've done the same exact thing so now you have some product now let's fix this formula all I need to do to fix this formula because I, I changed it I'm just gonna drag it over here and that's gonna drag it so that helps us we've used the proper absolutes AA2 so we can just drag and drop our formulas right away so that fixes that automatically now if we look at we have also the weekday the weekend and we have our holiday dates here so now we've got index match so all this does is it again all this formula does is it tests is it a is it a weekend is it a holiday that's the first test or is there an event that's within that day based on this employee ID based on this date and then it, and if if those conditions are true then it puts the event type right here so we've only I've only done two event types but you could build this out you can create additional formulas and in this case if we click conditional formatting we'll see that in this case the event is leave right so I've done the same thing if the event is leave then color it brown you can create your own colors you can create your own events you really have a lot of flexibility with this alright so we've got this now we know how we did the colors we know how we got the events but how do we get this cool information to pop up when it's a holiday how do we know what holidays and how do we get the information we get this nice little pop-up to show that uh, all the information we've got event name we've got created on, so we've got all that amazing information how do we get that because we only have the event name here that's not enough information what we really need to get all of that information is the event ID right I really need the event ID I don't have that event ID so I need to pull it from somewhere so what if what if we do something like this formula here remember this allowed us to pull up the this particular formula allowed us to pull up the event type but I could just as easily index the event ID if I were to index the event ID it would pull up the event ID that's really what we need but there's no space I've already got the event type here how am I gonna put an ID and a type in well we don't need to in fact I've put it in but you just use a duplicate schedule right here and here's where we have it so if you take a look at this you'll see we're indexing event ID so that's where we're indexing instead of instead of the event type we're now indexing the event ID so we're gonna use the same exact formula the same exact parameters the same exact date everything but we're indexing the event ID so that I can pull up the event ID the same minus four now instead of returning the event type we're gonna put the actual event ID here once I have the event ID I also know that it's a specific number of columns away this is column 66 this right here is column six one two three four five six so it's exactly 60 columns so in other words I know if this is not empty right if this equals training I need to go 60 columns away exactly 60 columns away and pull that event ID once I have that event ID 
I know everything about it, right? I've got the event ID here. I can pull everything up from that event. It's very easy because all I need to do is determine the row of that event ID and then pull it up. I could just as easily pull up, I could just as easily put the row there as well, but I like ID. In other words, you could do it so that you can actually just put the row and not the event ID. That would work too. If you put the row here, you'd have the row, but I wanted to show you the, the ability to take the ID and get the row from it. So that's important. So I wanted to show you how to do that. Let's take a look at that and see exactly how we were able to pull up this pop-up and pull in all the information from it using some VBA. So let's go into that so we can show you that. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you, I did kind of forget to show you how we arrived at this date. This date is made up of a few things. It's the schedule year, which is the named range right here. It's also the schedule month using the month, which is right here, and then one, right? So the date, the schedule year, the schedule month, and one. So if we were to change that to 2017, our schedule would automatically clear out and because it's, remember, it's all based on these dates. So any when those dates change, everything, all those formulas change except for the weekend. So when we change it back to 18, everything comes right back. So all the conditional formula is based on those dates. And so each subsequent day of the month is simply the previous one plus one, except for the last month. Let's take a look at the last one so we can write additional code. So for example, if we have a previous month of here, it's going to show, we could easily show this blank. Like if we were to do this, let's take a look at this. We could set this up to equals if a12 plus one, if we could actually we want the month number. I want to know if it's the same month. If the month of A12 plus one does not equal the month of A12, right? The month of A12, so it's just this right here. If that's not equal, then put nothing in. Right? So the, otherwise go ahead and put in the month, go ahead and put in this. So in other words, if they're different months, then you can show blank. So that's basically what that formula would do. So here we are. If the month of A12 plus one does not equal the month of A20, in other words, if the previous one and the current one are different months, then show blank, otherwise show it. So that would be, let's go ahead and fix that. Okay, so that shows blank. So that would be the last day of November would be blank, except for December, it would show, you see? So then we could do something like that. So it shows blank if you want that. That's kind of nice, nice little effect. So that way, the first day of the next month doesn't show automatically. And also, you could, for February, you could probably do the same thing here. So copy this formula. Because if you've got February and you don't want to do that, February's got 28 days, sometimes 29. So if we were to go previous, let's, let's fix, let's do February 2. All right, February here. So we don't want we don't want all this to show. So we can just copy the same formula and paste it right in here for all the months, and then paste those formulas in, and we can do that right here too. So we don't need that. We can do if and we can surround those with if error. Let's do an if error on subsequent ones. We don't need that, but we do need it here. We can wrap that in an if error just to show blank, comma, double quotes. Okay, we got that covered. So, and we'll do an if error on the last one too. Now we're showing blank if there's any issues. So that's perfect. Okay, so now we've got now we've got February that's covered. That looks good. That looks great. Okay, good. Now we're good to cover. Let's save those changes. All right, so we've got that. And also, I fixed the top row. Whoa, let me fix that row. All right, let's go ahead and freeze those panes. We're gonna click on this one, and this is gonna allow us to freeze those panes if we want to. We can click in the view and freeze those panes, and we click freeze panes, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna freeze our columns here. So we scroll over, it's gonna freeze, and we scroll up, it's gonna freeze. So that keeps those dates fixed. Of course, when we hide these, it's gonna be a nice schedule. And now we can scroll up, scroll up, our employees and keep those dates fixed. So it's really going to be helpful. Let's get back to October where we have our data and we're going to go back into, there we go. We're going to go back into the VBA so we can show you how we did these pop-ups on the event types to show us the event details. Into the developers, we can hide this, bring that up. Developers under the visual basic, we'll take a look at our code here and inside our modules, we have our scheduling macros here so we've got a few of them let's focus on those we've got this month 
that's kind of a cool feature so it's a really a quick way so if you're choosing if you're on a different year and you're on a different month and you want to look and you want to go right back all the way I want to do is I want to put the current year here and I want to put the current month right right under B right here B 10 I want to put the current month right there so with that macro that's all I want to do and that's automatically going to update that so let's take a look at that macro all we're going to do is sheet E1 equals the year of now which will put the current year there and sheet a B1 is going to put the current month there so that's all we have to do it's that simple and it just automatically does so I've assigned this macro to that button right up here this month that macro has been assigned that's very simple all right let's go into the two other macros now and we're going to focus on previous month and next month also with sheet 8 that is our scheduling and what we're going to do is we're going to I want to clear all the comments if we're changing a month I want to take that entire range and clear any comments so for example if if I have a comment here and I go to previous month I just want to clear that comment. I want to make sure that comments clear so that'll that one line of code because I don't it, we don't want that comment if it doesn't exist for a specific you know what we need here I need a month num name I mean I know it's August but it would be nice I'm kind of running out of space but it would be nice if we had a month name like saying August around here that's kind of what we're missing so I'll see if I can squeeze that in somewhere all right well if we got rid of this we could put it in there so we have October here and so the, I just explained to you why we wanted to remove those comments because they wouldn't apply for a new schedule so we remove the comments with this line of code and what I want to do is I want to say if we're going to the previous month if the current month is January then we need to one we need to reduce the year e1 equals e1 minus 1 and we need to make the next month 12 right so if we're in January and we're going previous we need to reduce the year by 1 and we need to bring the month to 12 so that's all we do with these two lines of code and next up if it's not if it's not one then all we need to do is take B1 which is our month and reduce it by one and pretty much the same thing for next month except in this case if the current month is 12 then we need to increase the year by one and then make the month number one otherwise then just increase it by one if it's not 12 it's not 12 then increase B1 by one so that's all we need to do with next month. So that's those are three little simple macros, very easy. And next we have two for the comments, one for for uh, our scheduling, add comment for events, and the other comment for our holiday. And it's a little bit, it's a bigger macro, but it's really quite simple. Most of it is dealing with just getting the data, right? I want to get that. So we've defined some names. We want the uh, active row, the current row, and the current column. Those are important, so we're going to dimension those as long the event ID I'm gonna to need to that event ID and we're gonna need the event row as long as well because I need to to use a find for the event ID and determine what row it's on so the event ID range and the event found ID those are gonna be ranges because we're gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search in our event ID range find the event ID and then pull the row out of it so event name type and uh, event employer are all strings I know these should be on separate lines but this is already a big enough macro and of course we need the event notes these are also as strings Let's put that in here those are also strings we have event created on start on and end on those are dates so it's important that we give them and then event comment as string this is going to be our final comment so what we're going to do is we're going to combine all that information into a single string and then we're going to place that string inside the pop-up comment. So we're going to focus on sheet eight. We want to clear any comments that exist. I only want one comment to show up. You may want, you may not want to comment this out, right? You may want additional. So for example, if I comment that out and I start creating additional comments, then you're going to have multiple. I, I just didn't want to have, you could though. So if you want, if you want these to show up, you can. But, but I didn't want it so I just decided to show only I didn't run a bunch of right but that's up to you it's just kind of a judgment call so in other words if you want to show multiple comments at the same time all you would need to do is just clear comment this line out right here clear comments but I only wanted one comment to show up at the, at the same time so it's very simple either way whichever you like the active row is the current active cell row we need to get that row because I need to know what row we're on because I'm gonna pull that ID from the current row 60 columns over so I need to know that current row that's very important all right so we need to get that if the cells remember we're focused on sheet 8 the active row the active column plus 60 right that's our column moving 60 columns to the right if it's empty then exit the sub 
if it's empty we don't have a, if it's empty we do not have a event ID so if we don't have an event ID we have nothing in other words if we move 60 columns over and we get a blank we can't move forward we have no event ID so we can not pull any information so then just exit the sub we want to make sure there's a value here before we move forward in our macro so that's very important all right the event ID so if the event ID equals cells the current row plus the current column plus 60 we know how we got that right now we know so now we've got the event ID now we need to now we need to pull the row from that this is what I wanted to show you the event ID range equals sheet 7 range event ID sheet 7 what is event ID and why is it on sheet 7 let me show you that event we go into our formulas our name manager and we see event ID here let's sort by name so we can find it quicker event ID here and we tab over that we see sheet 7 we know it's sheet 7 and our event ID is here so basically what I want to do is I want to set this as a range and I'm going to use event ID sheet 7 event ID set that as a range why do we need to set it as a range because we need to find something within the range I need to find it based on the event ID I need to find where that event ID is inside this range and then I need to pull the row out of it so that's important so we can do that uh, but first we have to set the range here next we set the found range what is the found range well the found range is going to be the event ID range and then we're going to find something inside this range what are we going to find we're going to find the ID event ID we don't need to start in any specific position we need to look in the values and we need to look for the whole numbers so all we're going to do is going to find this event ID and find it in this range if it's there if it's found if not found is nothing what does this mean this remember forget nothing forget not when you see those two negatives it says if it's found then if found then cancel these negatives out they're only there to confuse you not my idea all right so if this found then if it's found then continue on down here all the way until your end if right here so if it's not found we're pretty much going to skip out of everything so if it's found move forward let me tab this over here so we can see it there we go if it's found the event row then equals the found ID range so this is the range where it's found and the row in which it's found now we've defined the row now we know the row of our event once we know the row event we can pull the event name from column B we can pull the event type from column C and all of our event information we can define it in our variables right here now we could do even the event start on day what is the event start on day it's K plus L K is the date L is the time K is the date L let's look at that K is the date L is the time event list K is the date L is the time and on M is the date N is the time so we just need to add those two together add them together then we have both date and time we've already dimensioned those we don't need to format those because we've already defined them as dates once they're set as dates they are already formatted usually you could format them if they're not formatted the way you want but they're formatted as dates already so we don't need to even format them so start on and end on are both two and that's the plus remember this is the decimal our times are decimals our dates are whole numbers in Excel so that's very important so we've got that event start on time now all we need to do is put them together event and so now we take this this is our main comment this is our main string this is where everything's going to be stored in this string event name new and put the event name new line this means a new line created on and then the variable created on a new line type and so on and so forth now we're saying if it's reoccurring remember we've defined event reoccurring here if it's yes if it's reoccurring then I want to add in the recurs every and but if it's not recurring there's no reason to add recurring data in so that's why we have an if then if it's yes then add in recurring if not just skip all of that okay so then event comment we're going to end the event comment with the start on and the start on and then a new line and then the end on and then end on so that is how we get it so that's why we get when we click let's go back to the scheduler so that's why when we click on the events we see we have every event name and then event name created on the date and the time the type the leave the employee the notes right with recurs every this one there's no data in recurs every start on 
an end on. So everything is formatted there. And now we get this nice comment and look, it's nice and blue in color. How do we get that? Well, we do that with the rest of the code. Well, first of all, we're going to say with the active comment. Now remember, make sure that you do not add a comment unless it's been deleted. We've already deleted our comments here. In fact, if you, I should say, with if you clear this row out, right, if you're not going to use clear comments, you do need to delete any comments in the current cell. So make sure you do that. For example, uh, active cell, you would need to do that because it'll pre you can't create a comment on top of another comment. Uh, clear comment, right? So you, you need to at least do that for sure. If, if you haven't cleared out any, because that's important. You're going to get an error if you try to add a comment. If you try to add a comment and there's already a comment there, so you, maybe I'll probably leave this line in. It's probably just helpful, just in case. Because we don't want, we can't put a comment on top of a comment. We need to always delete comment before we add it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say with this comment, what are we going to do? We're going to set the width. We're going to set the height of that shape. We're going to set, we want a rounded rectangle. We're going to give it a font of Tahoma, a size of 11. It will not be bold. Going to give it a color of font color index 2. That's going to be white. And uh, we're going to give the four color 0 here on the four color. And the back color going to be 255. We want it visible. We're going to give it a specific blue. This is an RGB color. You can get any RGB color, of course, through the colors. Right? You just have to click on the format cells if you're looking to get a specific RGB. Click on the more colors and then custom here. You can get your RGB value. So if you wanted a different RGB value, click here and you could set your RGB 78, 129, 244. So here you can set any color you want using RGB. So you can easily create your own color and then copy these uh, three different colors into your code here. And that would get you some customized code. So you could copy those colors into these three values right here. And then we're going to give it a gradient. And this just gives, kind of gives a diagonal gradient. So it gives it that nice look. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the text. This is the event comment. This is the the text, the string that we've been building throughout here. That gives it our event comments. So that's really, really helpful, giving that comment. And then, of course, with the act cell, we want to make sure that comment is visible. So we're just going to make it visible right away. And that's it. Now, for the holidays, we're going to do something very, very similar, except the holiday name, we're going to define, we're going to set the holiday date here. The holiday date is the current the row to and the active cell column. We need to define that holiday date because we need to find that holiday date. The holiday date is going to be located here. For example, this is a holiday. Right? So what I want to do is I want to pull the name of this holiday up. How do I find the name of that holiday? Well, I know the date is October 9th. The date is in row two, row two. So we just need to pull the date. And then I need to run a match and I say, okay, in this holiday date, where is where is the October 9th? Well, it's here. Okay, let me index. Let me index the holiday name and then find that name here. And then we have the name. So that's all we did. And we do that through VBA. So let's work through that. So we know the holiday date is in row two with the active cell column. So that pulls up our holiday date. Next up, again, we're going to find it and we're going to use the holiday date range. Holiday date range has been set here under holiday dates, just as we did before. So we've set the holiday dates and now we can find the holiday within that range. So we're going to say, okay, now we know the holiday row. If not found, if it's found, then do the following. The holiday row equals found holiday date row. This sets up our row. We know the row. Now that we know the row, it's simple. Sheet 4, which is our admin, sheet 4 admin, right? D and holiday row. D is the column where all of our holidays are gone. We didn't even use index here. D and the row. We know it's D and now we know the row, so it's very easy to pull that holiday name directly from it. And now all we need to do is add the comment. Of course, this one's going to, the height's going to be much smaller because we only have a little bit of information on the holiday name. And we're going to add the comment. Again, let me just put that there just in case you decide not to. Because if you don't, if we don't have clear, I clear, okay, if we don't have clear all comments, then we do need to clear add it. I'll just put it to double check. Active, just in case, active cell, so we can avoid bugs. Clear comments. Okay, so that'll clear the comment just for the active cell in case you decide not to clear the others.
All right, so that's going to clear it out. And basically what we're going to do is we've given this a, a different color here, but everything else the same. And the holiday, given the text, holiday and holiday name. That is it. So that's how we create those amazing scheduling and pop-ups, customized pop-up. I want to see you create them yourself. It's going to be really great. And so we see now they pop up. We just click on it and it pops up. Click on it and it pops up. So it's a really, really great feature to have in the schedule. We're going to build out this scheduler in the next. We're going to put in, of course, time clock information in this. That's going to be really cool because it's going to show us when they've clocked in, when they haven't. And we can color code them. So, for example, if somebody has gone over time, uh, let's say we come in in the morning and somebody didn't clock out the previous day. I want that to show bright yellow on the schedule. I want to know somebody didn't clock out right away by looking at the schedule. I think that would be really, really important and really helpful for an administrator. All right, I think we covered mostly everything that I wanted to cover today, although probably a few things that I left off. I did make a list here. Admin redesign, we covered that. Custom fields, we covered that. Admin defaults, employee ID update, that's just something that we on that, I just covered making sure the employee ID is updated here because that wasn't happening. That was kind of a bug fix I did in the event ID. Uh, frequency data validation, covered that a little bit. We did cover that, actually. Reminder for events, we got that. Scheduling sheet, event holiday. All right, we got it covered. That's it for employees. Uh, manager number seven, thank you so much for watching. Uh, your comments and suggestions are always appreciated, so keep those coming in. We've got uh, probably four or five more different parts to this. We've got to add in users. We've got to add in payroll. We still have a lot to cover, but it's going to be the best employee manager in Excel you have ever seen. So that is my personal guarantee to you. Just stick with us. Uh, keep watching. Keep sharing. Much appreciated, and thank you so much. Mm -hmm.